I'm actually going to ask a question now, Robert. Where do you get your inspiration from? Do you look at the stone and does the design come to you or do you start with the design and then look for the stone that's going to fit that? Mm. There's, two, there's two ways. One is always a stone-centric plea. So when you have a, a single stone, just like with this, whether it's the purplish pink sapphires that are in the earrings or whether it's the... Uh, the pink with the pink diamonds around it. It's, I never think about the design first. I first think around the stone, how it's gonna fasten, what its personality is gonna be. Once I have that, I study that stone under very different lights. I have 20 different light sources. I use about 15 of them on a regular basis because it brings out the different color of that pink. It also shows me what it's gonna look like in every light. It's gonna look in a harsh light, in a low light, in a bright light, as you saw in a fluorescent light. So once I get that personality, then I look at it to see what that stone wants to be. And I do that with complementary stones. And that's how, for instance, the pink diamond comes with that pink sapphire. So the inspiration is really the stone itself. There's another part where it's more of the collection based. So as you see some of the bracelets that you wear, and it's all based out of a collection. With the two different stones, color stones, it's, um, it's based on, uh, one is called the American Glamour. It's because how jewelers made things in the 40s and the 50s, the American jewelers, and they would combine the two different colors together and prongs at it. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more bold, and the two complementary colors together. So everything is about uh, a woman's lifestyle that would, she would wear and not around an object. Robert, can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with all these different names for your different collections? Yeah, as I first mentioned, uh, American Glamour, because I uh, wanted to show what actually American jewelry never had an identity. They all, when you say it to a jeweler, you can say what French jewelry is, and Italian, and, and even some of the English and Wardian. We really never had an identity, and people would always think a, a prong setting for a Tiffany. But it was really, as I mentioned, this, double com this combination of jewelers in America in the 30s and 40s. So that was always meant to be a statement of what American jewels would be, not uh, a copy, but an interpret a contemporary interpretation and what I believe it is. Uh, one of the De La Vie collection, if you have a bracelet there, I'm not sure if you had a bracelet or a pair of earrings. It was actually taken from, you know, the start of life, De La Vie, part of life. And what we have, yes, as, as we have that is when I start always, because I'm a real, not only a lighting geek, but I also study space and life and and as water comes down onto our earth, the precipitation starts with a drop, droplet of water that turns into a pear shape. And with the resistance of the gravity to the pressure of it, it actually splits and goes into an oval. And so I'm using all these shapes. And when you see a piece of droplet on the ground, if you look under a magnifying glass, whenever you see a droplet see on the ground, it almost looks like it's a dome over it. it almost looks like it's a film over it. Well, that's where we came, I looked and say, well, that is the bezel. This is how these should be held. So the De La Vie is a combination of how life starts. And so it's the shapes that come, that come from this participation from the, from the clouds to the ground and how it should be set as that bezel when you looked under a magnification. So that's the De La Vie. And it's just a part of life that should be part of us. Um, I'm sure what else's collection do you, I'm not sure what else is everyone's wearing there. Here we go, Robert. Oh, okay, the bracelet. Mm -hmm. the bracelet uh, we, I call it Queen of Diamonds. And everything in the collection has this, when you look at a playing card and you see diamonds, that playing card's 2,000 years old. Where do they take it from? They take it from that original sort, and Gary could explain this better, of this cubic formation, how diamonds come out of the ground. And so that cubic formation is always in the shape of our collection of Queen of Diamonds. Mm 